I don't know if we can ever claim to stop a terrorist attack when you're talking about somebody who is just uh, maniacal and deranged and ready to give their own life. Um, but there are things I think that perhaps could be done. And what I would really be curious to know is what did transpire between him and the FBI? What was the context of those three interviews that the FBI did? And I know that the FBI front and center um, has some input on, on what they might do differently in the future. No way do I want to fault the FBI. I'm sure they're faulting themselves. Here it is. This guy was in front of the FBI three times, interviewed three times, and yet um, this act did occur. You have said um, you, you, you don't support a ban on Muslims entering the United States, obviously. I do not support a ban okay. on Muslims entering the country. And you don't support uh, more gun restrictions? I don't. I'm in the camp that believes that if you restrict guns, uh, the bad guys are going to have guns. Just that simple. So you think it won't stop them. Here's what Bill Clinton said, though, about what happened on Saturday night uh, in that Orlando club and why he thinks gun control would have made a difference. Here he is. If the guy had just had a pistol in that nightclub, I don't think anybody believes he could possibly have killed 49 people. Well, and it was also, and, and I, I you, you, hate to, you hate to second guess anything, but all these uh, events, too, are occurring. All these uh, horrific uh, shootings are happening in gun-free zones, where if potentially it wasn't a gun-free zone and that there were a number of people in that nightclub that might have been carrying weapons for self-defense, that it may have... Um, lessen the tragedy and and by no means do I want to uh, second guess anything. So the bottom line is you don't believe that, that guns are the issue. You have a, had a message that has resonated with more and more people, Governor. All right, look, now you're between 9 and 12 percent in some new polls. Your numbers have really gone up. 15 percent is the magic number. You get 15 percent, you're going to be sitting on stage with Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump in the debates. Whoa. That so, might just happen. So, so what, okay, what, what are you going to do to make that happen? A, 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 unique, uh, a unique position that myself and Bill Wold, my running mate, have, and that is, is that we are fiscally conservative, over the top. We're socially liberal, but it really doesn't matter whether you're socially liberal or conservative, as long as you don't force that on other people. Let people make decisions in their own lives. And then lastly, with regard to our military interventions, I think our military interventions have resulted in the world being less safe, not more safe. So what do you do if you don't get to 15 percent, if you're not on that debate stage? What's your strategy? Well, there's no way to win. There's no way to get elected president of the United States. And the only chance that I have of being elected is to be in the presidential debates. Some big name Republicans, as you know, detest Donald Trump. It's a fair word to use, detest. Mitt Romney among them. He says he will not vote for Donald Trump. He's going to, to write in a name or he's going to vote for someone else, possibly you. Here's what he told Wolf Blitzer about you specifically. I'm going to look at what he has to say. Uh, his running mate, Bill Weld, is someone who I respect enormously. Former Republican governor of Massachusetts. Exactly. And he was a, a fine governor, a fine friend, a supporter of mine, both in 2008 and 2012. Uh, if Bill Weld were at the top of the ticket, it would be very easy for me to vote for Bill Weld for president. So I'll get to know uh, Gary Johnson better and see if he's someone who uh, I, could, uh, I could end up voting for. Have you had any conversations uh, with Mitt Romney? Uh, I have not, but I think that he echoes uh, the sentiment of a lot of Republicans, and I, I think it's also sentiment among a lot of Democrats. And I don't want to either say that that's elected officials. I mean, elected officials, at the end of the day, kind of have to line up rank and file. It's too bad that uh, Paul Ryan has really uh, stuck his neck out, if you will, uh, endorsing Donald Trump, and then subsequently having to say that today, talking about the Muslim ban, that it's just not America. Well, it's not America. So what's interesting though with Paul Ryan, do you think that he would ever change his mind? That he'll ever say, no, my conscience does not speak for this, that he would ever uh, change his mind, get on, get on board with someone like you? Well, one of my strengths is, is that uh, I, I tell the truth. And so when you tell the truth, uh, you're able to admit mistakes. I make mistakes also, but I like to think that I fess up to them. So I think Paul Ryan has an opportunity here to, uh, to say, look, I made a mistake. And I'm not saying that results in an endorsement uh, of me, but 
come on, uh, the statements that he's making, he's made a hundred statements that would disqualify any other presidential candidate from running, and yet all you have to do is turn the page and tomorrow it'll be 102. So Mitt Romney is looking at you, but he mentioned a big reason though, Governor, that he's not sure about you. And that reason is your support for legalizing marijuana. A lot of your supporters, by the way, they love you for this. Your, your core sure, group, there's sure, a core that likes it. Sure. But someone like Mitt Romney, now that you have all of these very mainstream Republicans now looking around, he's nervous about it. And here's what he said. I think the legalization of marijuana on a recreational basis and legalization of drugs uh, would be highly destructive to our coming generations and the work ethic of this, of this country. I mean, mar marijuana makes people stupid. I would suggest that marijuana, from a medicinal standpoint, uh, directly competes with legal prescription painkillers and drugs that statistically kill 100,000 people a year. There has not been one documented death due to marijuana. That's on the medical side. On the recreational side, I have always maintained that legalizing marijuana will lead to less overall substance abuse because it's so much safer than everything else that's out there, starting with alcohol. So the bottom line question, though, when he says it makes people stupid, do you agree with that or not agree with that? As someone who formerly used marijuana I do not agree with that as someone who has used marijuana. I do not agree with that. All right. Well, Governor, thank you very much. I appreciate your time tonight. Oh, I appreciate yours. Thank you. Thank you. On June 17th, 2015, like many other Wednesday nights, a group of people gathered for Bible study at Charleston's Mother Emanuel AME Church, one of the largest, oldest black congregations in the South. I stayed that night because my friend was leading the Bible study, Myra Thompson, and she asked me to stay. Uh, originally, I said I wasn't going to stay. Holly Shepard was one of 12 members, part of this devout group who welcomed a stranger into their worship, a young white man who had never attended before. Nearly an hour later, as they closed their eyes in prayer, the man unloaded his gun. Evil walked into the side door of your church. I had faith, that's why I'm still here. I prayed under that table and he left me here. The gunman told Polly Shepard he would let her live. She was one of five people to survive the massacre one year ago. CNN was given rare access inside that Bible study room, and I spoke exclusively to those left behind. This was the room. This, this is, is the where room. he came. This yes. is where people were seated yes. around the table. Around the table. Yes. Holding Bible study. Yes. And he was invited to uh, join them. Reverend Norvell Goff presides over 30 churches in the district. He left Mother Emanuel just before the gunman entered the church through the side door. He left to go to another meeting, and that was about 20 minutes of eight. My understanding, the gunman was already in the parking lot. A dispatch log details the initial 911 calls from survivors that night. These chilling words show their pleas for help. Shot pastor female is hiding under the table male is reloading the number of shots fired so many were you sitting around the table or you were in the back i was around the table the last table in in the back when you prayed under that table were you asking for something i was asking that he wouldn't kill all of us yes first responders rushed to the scene in mere minutes that's when Charleston Police Chief Gregory Mullen got the call. I was in my home with my wife uh, preparing to go to bed, uh, actually. And uh, when I received the phone call, very quickly I realized something was bad because my deputy chief told me that we had a shooting in the church downtown. And then I'm on the phone talking with the mayor. When the police chief called, it was about 9.30. After I hung up, I went to my closet and, and put on a coat and tie suit. Why? Because I knew that um, everything I said and did had to be perfect. And I knew that I had to evidence complete respect for this church. When you see it come across the TV, I'm like, whoa, that's my mama church. 
Esther Lance was among other family members and friends gathered around the block in a hotel waiting to hear the fate of their loved ones. When you knew something was wrong at the mm -hmm. church, did mm -hmm. you know your mom was there in yeah. that Bible study? Mm -hmm. And I said, listen, just tell me the truth. There's my mama in that church. So what did you say to those family members behind closed doors? We explained to them that we had had a situation in the church as they were aware of, and that at this point, uh, that there were nine people that were deceased. No, all I can see is the body bag. Oh. But I knew my mama going. My heart telling me this. You know. Yes. We were now in the throes of planning nine funerals, homegoing celebration. So then they deducted that that was their brother, sister, father, cousin, friend, and all the ranges of, of, of weeping, crying, wailing, moaning, sobbing. Oh. It was a gasp that I'll never forget when we, when we told them that. And at that point, Reverend Goff um, broke out into a song, and everybody was singing together and holding hands, and, holding praying. hands and praying. After an intense 14-hour manhunt, police apprehended their suspect. We later learned the 21-year-old gunman hoped to start a race war. This act of terrorism, racism, bigotry, was the act of a, one individual who wanted to create a race riot. What they found out is that our faith was greater than fear and that love would always overtake hate. We pulled together to make sure that how we responded to evil was not with evil, 